Please welcome back to the stage, Jeff Rupert. Well, hello again. Um, Jim, thanks for that great presentation. Um, and I hope, you know, that everybody really catches that part of the message that, you know, we can do this in other places. Um, and in fact, um, I have the pleasure of introducing an individual. We have a, uh, there's a, there's a large landscape level land protection project um, being developed in Florida at this moment, um, at, the, at the headwaters of the Everglades system. Um, and I get to introduce the gentleman who's leading that effort. Charlie Paliza is the refuge manager for Pelican Island, Archie Carr, and Lake Wales Ridge National Wildlife Refuges. Um, he, uh, he has degrees from uh, Elmira College in New York and uh, University of South Dakota. Um, <laughs> uh, Charlie's a 31-year um, employee. Most of those years have been spent working in refuges. He's worked across the country um, along the Atlantic coast, prairie potholes, deserts of uh, Southern California, in the Hawaiian and Pacific Islands. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, Charlie, and uh, we, get to, we get to learn about one of the priority projects for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So Charlie, come on out. Good morning, everyone. Aloha to my friends from across the country. I especially want to thank Jim for that perfect lead in. And um, he's actually made my job really simple. All I have to do is say, if you can take the Blackfoot Challenge and transpose the name Everglades Headwaters National Wildlife Refuge and Conservation Area and think about where we might be a couple of years from now, I don't have to say anything else because I can just get off the stage right now and he said it all. So thank you, Jim. Barefoot girls sitting on the hood of a Dodge, drinking warm beer in the warm summer rain. These are lyrics from vintage Bruce Springsteen that I call to mind often when I think about the day when we first started talking about this refuge proposal, as it foreshadows the small group of people that sat around sitting on the hood of a Prius drinking chilled bottled water <laughs> in the sweltering Florida summer heat. That I would find myself today talking about helping to conserve portions of a 1.8 million, million acre landscape is humbling. Nor can I imagine that presented with the same opportunity 30 years ago that we would come up with the same, um, same conclusion. That is to pursue a landscape scale partnership effort to conserve, preserve wildlife as part of an intact working landscape, rather than simply proposing a spot on a map for a new refuge. Not that a new refuge is not noble a cause enough, but it's still just a spot on a map. What few of us gathered that day two years ago had envisioned was a conservation project that would have protected habitat for 39 threatened and endangered species, such as Florida grasshopper sparrow and Everglades snail kite, that could be respons to responsive to any of the changes we might expect to occur from human demographic or global climate change, that could provide corridors for wide-ranging mammals, such as Florida black bears and Florida panthers, that would contribute to the improved water quality and storage capacity of the upper Everglades watershed providing benefits for the 13 million people of Peninsular Florida that derive their drinking water and recreational waters from this area, that provides the service with the opportunity to join with our existing conservation partners and engage the public in outdoor recreational and educational activities. One of the things that most fascinates me about this project is that every time we met with another partner, another agency or organization, they always had the same sly smile. It's the same one I had backstage when Jim was talking. That they shared some kind of inside perspective, some joke, some personal thought that just ached to be shared. And what they shared was that their very same vision for that very same resource. So an idea was born, a Greater Everglades Partnership, 
a group of agencies, organizations, and individuals that are concerned with preserving the working ranch landscape, wildlife habitat populations, improving the water resources for the greater Everglades ecosystem, linking existing conservation lands, and engaging the public. The catalyst for this new partnership discussion is the proposal for a new 150,000 acre National Wildlife Refuge and Conservation Area. An area of working ranches, sand hills, wet and dry prairies, longleaf pine flatwood forests, and cypress swamps. The landscape itself is a broad grassland savanna not unlike that found in the Great Plains. It has served the stewardship of several generations of ranching families. And it is this stewardship that helped define the need to include them as a key component in the conservation strategy for this area. The bulk of which centers around a conservation easement program that will allow ranching to persist in the landscape, while at the same time protecting the landscape that is still the home to a wide variety of imperiled and common species. If approved, this would be the first of potentially three proposals that would ultimately conserve and link habitats from Disneyland to Everglades National Park. So, are we the partners traveling this road together? Yes, we are currently engaging others and building our relationships with the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Defense, county governments, organizations such as Audubon, the Nature Conservancy, and the National Wildlife Refuge Association, and in the case of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, we're working closely with them to coordinate our efforts to assure the needs of our constituents, the public, are met. Is everyone engaged and on board with this project? Engaged, yes. On board, surprisingly, no. Not everyone agrees that another refuge is warranted and necessary, with some that are vocally opposed to any increased involvement in land acquisition programs. Will this effort be successful? I certainly believe so, and I am joined and supported in this project by many. Has the process of working in partnership on this large landscape been difficult? I'd rather say it's been challenging. Rewarding, yes. Worthwhile, unbelievably so. Even if nothing else, but for the relationships and partnerships that we have bridged and begun to forge. 30 years ago, were we to be sheltered under that live oak from the summer sun, we would have been likely to be content with the original option proposed to us, a 5,000 acre parcel, and called it a good proposal for a new refuge. I would have gone to bed that night and slept well, knowing that I had done my part for conservation of Central Florida's natural resources. Today that approach would fall short of the conservation needs, given the broader land perspective, landscape perspective, that we share today with our partners. We've graduated from beer bottles to bottled water, from muscle cars to hybrids, from being a lone blue goose to being one of many working collaboratively on landscape scale conservation efforts. We must work collaboratively. Our partners ranging from other service divisions, state and local agencies, organizations, and the landowners all need to be engaged. While more difficult and challenging, the end result is certainly vastly improved and a more comprehensive product. Without partner support, we would not be talking about conserving one of the last great grassland working landscapes east of the Mississippi. Nor do I believe would the other landscape scale conservation initiatives along the Rocky Mountains, Kansas grasslands, or the Connecticut River be as successful as they are. Soon, we hope to join the list of successes and places and place another plank on Pelican Island's Centennial Trail as we announce the establishment of the latest National Wildlife Refuge and Conservation Area, Everglades Headwaters. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you all this week.